On today's series, Behind the Mystery, we're talking about Cushing's syndrome, a rare hormonal disorder often misdiagnosed. And although it's rare, one thing is very common. Patients and families find themselves coping with many challenges that come with this disease. Here with us today to share her brave story is patient advocate Leslie Edwin, and also joining in on the conversation is professor and director of the Northwest Pituitary Center at Oregon Health and Science University, Dr. Maria Flesherio. Good morning to both of you. Good morning. Good morning. Leslie, let me start with you. Cushing's syndrome, a lot of people have not heard about it. Before we talk about it, tell me what challenges you faced before you realized you had it. I never really had any health problems until I had Cushing's. Um, before I was diagnosed, what I started had... started happening? Um, I had, I would develop a weird skin rash that was little circles on my skin, or I would develop a, a lot of acne all of a sudden, which I've never had that problem, even in high school. Uh -huh. um, and then it just got to the point where there was just more and more things happening. I was getting very sweaty, I was losing my energy, uh, a lot of weight gain, facial hair, it was just an avalanche of problems and all and of this just suddenly happened very very quick over a period of about six to twelve months it all just kind of you know became bigger and I went to the gynecologist because I thought I had PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, very common for women to have. I had all the symptoms of that, but some testing showed that it was a hormonal problem, but it was coming from the brain rather than PCOS. So Leslie, when did you finally realize or when were you diagnosed with Cushing's syndrome? When my gynecologist referred me to an endocrinologist, he did the first of, there's urine, blood, and saliva tests. So we did urine and blood. They came back very high, so he wanted to do them again because he thought maybe there was a mistake. As soon as they came back the same values, he felt that it was out of his league and wanted me to go to a specialist. So I was quickly in the hands of some experts. And doctor, what I'm hearing here, which I love, is the fact that she was number one proactive. She was doing her own homework, kind of like investigating herself, and she gets what I think was an early diagnosis, which is really key for a rare disease like this, correct? That's correct. Her case was textbook case, and that's not always uh, happening. So there's other the, symptoms too? Definitely there are more specific uh, symptoms. For example, when you gain weight, but mostly in the belly area and the arms and the legs are really thin. When you have large purple stretch marks, when the patients have uncontrolled diabetes and hypertension, despite the regular treatment, sometimes they have the thin skin that you have ecchymosis, like really easy bruising. And then also young women that present with fractures. So all these symptoms at the beginning are non-specific, and because of that, most of the patients are not diagnosed for years because the disease, like in her case, at the beginning she was thought she has polycystic ovarian syndrome, for example. Right. So until the patient becomes textbook case, like she was, mm -hmm. or they have a doctor that's looking into this, or the patients are more proactive, Cushing's can be uh, diagnosed really late. And this has an influence on all the comorbidities that the patient will have so of the course. earlier the diagnosis the, and that's what we're trying to do to increase awareness about the disease itself and let's talk about Cushing's disease a little bit more what exactly is it is it hereditary what causes it do we know we know okay and we know more and more over time Cushing's it's everything that's high cortisol most of these Cushing's syndrome cases are actually due to the doctors that are giving patients cortisol as a treatment. Really? Yes, and so now we're talking about endogenous Cushing's that's part of the Cushing syndrome that's coming from the body and most of the times from a tumor. So this cortisol can come from different areas and most of it is coming from the pituitary tumors. And what about treatment? Is there treatment for Cushing syndrome? Yes, it is, and most of these patients are actually doing well after surgery, but the disease can come back. Okay. If it's coming back, then we have some other treatments, medical treatment, for example, with several type of drugs that are covering different areas, or pituitary, or the adrenal glands are blocking the receptor. Sometimes we have to take the adrenals out, the source of the cortisol, or even radiation therapy. And Leslie, you had this surgery? I've had two surgeries. My pituitary has been removed and I'm in recurrence right now actually so I just finished a six-week uh, daily radiation treatment 
and I'm on medication right now. And I know you've done so much more after you were diagnosed. Uh, you're so brave, not to mention, I love the proactive approach that you took, which is so important for patients yeah, out there today to, to do their own digging and find out more. But I want you to stay right there because when we come back, we're gonna continue the conversation with my special guest. And you're not gonna believe what this wonderful powerhouse of a lady has been doing to help others like her cope. We'll be right back. Welcome back to a very special Behind the Mystery. Today we're talking about a rare hormonal disorder known as Cushing syndrome, which is caused by overexposure to cortisol. And with me once again is patient advocate Leslie Edwin, along with the director of the Pituitary Center and professor of medicine and neurological surgery at OHSU, Dr. Maria Flaschirio. Welcome back, ladies. Thank you. Doctor, let's go back real quick about, you know, not just is it important to have that early diagnosis, recognize the symptoms, but the proper diagnosis, correct? That's huge. Yes, that's really important because you have all these symptoms, non-specific, then later on some specific, but it's important to have a diagnosis. If somebody is thinking about Cushing's, then a screening test is necessary. And there are several types of screening, in urine, in salivary cortisol, in the blood, but we have to do screening before we move forward to confirming the diagnosis, and then later on to find out where is the disease coming from, because we said earlier, can come from different areas, mostly in the pituitary, but from everywhere. And Leslie, you've certainly uh, moved mountains, and I, I do want our viewers to know that because you, you've taken something that was an avalanche in your life, as you described to me a few minutes ago, mm. and, and turned it into a positive. You've created an organization helping others. Tell me about that and why you did it. Uh, well, I started a local support group um, after I reached remission, and then several months later, I found the Cushing Support and Research Foundation um, and started working with them. I've traveled a bit for them. I've written articles. Um, it's very rewarding to be able to help people that were in my situation because I just did, I couldn't find that when I was sick, and so just be a part of that and working with doctors like Dr. Flasheri, who is uh, very humbling. I appreciate the opportunity and it's nice to help people. And Leslie and Doctor, we've come a long way. More needs to be done. Some final words from you? I wanted first to thank Leslie for what she's doing with the organization for all the patients with Cushing's everywhere. Early diagnosis is key. Since the discovery of Cushing's now more than 100 years ago, I think we moved quite nicely along, but we're not there yet. We have advanced in surgery, in diagnosis, we have medical treatment, several of them approved just for the last four years, and several others are in development. So if you invite us back in several years, I think we're really ready to report more things good for the Cushing's patients. Well, when you have that great news, the doors are open here on the Balancing Act, so you come back anytime. Promise? Thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you, doctor, for educating us on Cushing's syndrome. And Leslie, thank you so much for coming and sharing sharing your personal story and for what you're doing for, for others out there today. Thank you for the opportunity to let us talk about this on national TV. And <laughs> one final note here, Strongbridge Biopharma is conducting Sonics, a clinical trial for patients with endogenous Cushing's syndrome. This is an investigational drug that has not been FDA approved for any use. Patients must fulfill certain eligibility criteria. For more information, please visit CushingsSyndromeStudy.com. And for more information on Cushing's, please visit CSRF.net. Of course, you can always go to our website, and that's TheBalancingAct.com for more information on this segment.